Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross and today I'm going to continue my retrospectives of codexes with an 8th edition. Today I'm going to have a look at the Thousand Suns. Now, interesting one because obviously they were sort of the, how can I put it, the rebringing of Primarchs to 40k with Magnus coming into edition. Also a bit more of a focus, the beginning of focus on Chaos and to get in their separate codexes or separate forces. Again, the Rubrics, the Zangors and the Scarab Cult. Very interesting time back in 2016 when we saw a big focus on uh, Thousand Suns and Chaos in general. Of course you have uh, Ritual of the Damned, which you can get as well. But today I'm just going to focus purely on the Codex well because they are sort of the foundation stone of the sort of force and certainly many of them have aged a wee bit now, so it's best to have a look at the codexes, see what works, see what doesn't, see what things need to be updated. So with that, let's have a look at the Thousand Suns. So the beginning of a, so we come to the Thousand Suns, the start of what can be described as a resurgence for variety within chaos. I remember telling David in a message, man, Magnus is coming out, he's coming to 8th edition, and he was like, nah, it's not happening, you probably saw a Lord of Change update. Well, David, you are mighty wrong in that one, though a lot of change had to come later. However, this was, I think, roughly December 2016. Magnus came with Rubric, Scarbaco, Zangors, and the Traitor Legion book. That was added so much to the Chaos 7th edition, then like seven months later, it was kind of uh, all ruled out for 8th edition. But that Traitor book was great. So coming into 8th, not much was added to Thousand Suns. Sure, you know, Martarian joined the fray, uh, Gulwin just before 8th, I think it was February 2017. But Mortarion came with Death Guard Codex and a bunch of units, far more than Thousand Suns. However, Thousand Suns Codex came a lot later than the Death Guard Codex, and with that came experience, a lot of problems, the first Codex problems that Death Guard may have had. Thousand Suns managed to avoid a few of those. So the Universal Rule, now of these I'm going to take from the Chaos Space Marine retrospective did and kind of Death Guard as well, basically because some of the elements are sort of the same. So first we've got Death to the False Emperor, uh, is actually, you know, a rule many armies love, are Orcs and Tyranids for instance, uh, minus the caveat. Uh, combat is what is written for Chaos Space Marines, but they don't do it so well, and especially for a thousand suns. Uh, there's some great combinations here for the Doom Prince. However, uh, being stuck to the Imperium keyword is a problem. Plenty of units are Imperium, but if you face Xenos or Chaos forces, then that is a rule gone out of the way. And I don't like that. I really don't like sort of these major rules for armies that help augment them. And then if it's so restrictive, it's out of about you know 50 plus percent games of your or, that you play. That is not ideal. So. Yeah, I'd like that fix. I think in my Chaos Retrospective, I mentioned that I'd prefer it to be Marks. So if you go for Chaos Space Marines, then you can choose a Mark of Chaos, and that would give you a bonus. Obviously, a Thousand Suns would be the Mark of Zinch. So that should give a bonus rather than this Death False Emperor. Maybe if you want to include Death False Emperor, fine. But because it can be ignored by a lot of armies, I don't find that ideal. Even, for instance, taking Death Watch with their special issue ammunition, that doesn't just affect Xenos, and that's like their whole thing. It affects every army they face, so, you know, it, you can find ways around it to make it work for forces. Though I do believe Death Watch may be getting uh, an ability, I've read this recently, their rule may include that reroll hit rolls of one or something against Xenos when it comes to their new codex stuff. Don't quote me in that one. I'm just going by rumours. So, you know, Death Watch maybe are actually, that example may be edging a little bit badly now. But certainly special issue ammunition in 8th edition, it was trying to affect every army it faced. And I feel that was a problem for Chaos side on that one. Demonic Ritual, this one is terrible when summoning was a large part of 7th and arguably a bit of a problem. In this edition it was all but pointless. It costs points and there's certainly uh, and there's no certainty to how it works out for you. Uh, you can plan for it but it can still come at a great cost and not work out. Uh, Smart players can actually do quite well with this, but ultimately it just does not work out in this game quite as much. This needs to be reviewed if it's to play any part in real match to play. Uh, of course we have Hateful Assault, both, uh, both Discipline, etc, etc. You know, that's 
you know, those rules I'm not going to really mention as much. You have them, they're addition, great for Marines, it was fantastic. They actually have a lot less than Death Guards. Now they have Disgust and Resilient and Plague Weapons, though Thousand Sons do have minus two AP Bolters, which helps a lot. Like, that's a huge help. You do pay for it a bit in points. But that minus two AP really pays dividends. So versus Disgust and Resilient and Plague Weapons, Hector Rubik's also have their Ignore Heavy, and I think uh, plus one to armor saves if they're hit by damage one weapons. Yeah, there was a lot of interesting times in indexes talking about which one is actually more survivable. Uh, also, they've got uh, their detachment rule, which is sort of the Brotherhood of Sorcerers, a very simple legion rule that adds six inches to your psyker abilities. Overall, I'm not really pleased with this one. Sure, there's situations where you need that extra six inches, but in the progress of the game, not so much. You know, you should be able to easily get within it if you want to cast. Uh, now, it's not as quite good as, say, Grey Knights, which is their plus one to cast, and maybe that would be a bit unoriginal to have, you know, Brotherhood of Sorcerers, and I think they've got Brotherhood of Psychers, I could be wrong on that one. But simply put, uh, with all Space Marine stuff, it seems a little bit lacklustre to go, just have a six inches extra on your psychic abilities. That just seems a little bit lacklustre. World of Trait. Actually, a really nice section for Thousand Suns. There's obviously a focus on psychic abilities. But also an area of survival. Also very nice, a nice uh, aggressive one for charging. In the survival one, it's a toss up between Undying Form and Otherworldly Prescience. Overall, it's actually hard for me to say which one I would change, because I also like to make one I would change. Which is first for me in these retrospectives. Maybe Lord of Forbidden Lore, uh, making that they know a full lore of their choice plus their additional spells, uh, rather than just one extra spell, which seems a little bit lackluster. I say that a little bit too much here. Also, High Magistrate should be plus one to cast and deny, you know, would also be good. I think that's maybe a little bit lackluster. Stop it, Ross. But generally, you know, this is a strong section. It's not bad. It's certainly better than other forces. Stratums, there is 22 to choose from in this codex, which is a healthy amount. Certainly better than Death Guard, which only had eight. Now, in Psychic Awakening, Thousand Suns only got a handful, while Death Guard got a lot more and relics. So they kind of won out on that one. Importantly, they do get Death Forge, which Death Guard would have loved, so it's good to see that Thousand Suns do get it. However, even with a f uh, even with more of a selection, it's actually not great for Thousand Suns. A fair few of these are kind of average at best. We have a few great ones, Veterans of Long War, of course, and a large scar uh, unit of Scarabs will do really well with that. Uh, Cabalist Focus uh, 1 is really good, effective, good way to boost up Magnus to get more of those 2d6 uh, mortal wounds. But there's plenty, and I mean plenty, that could actually be redone, and I'm going to go over them. Blast mach Machines, let's face it, we didn't really use an 8th and a ninth. you're not going to use it at all. Uh, Corsicating Beam is a bit heavy for 3 command points, sure if your opponent castles up, fine. But at 4 plus and 5 plus against uh, characters, it's kind of like, cam up, cam up, you know, 3 command points, that's a bit expensive. Warp Flame Gargoyles, it's cheap but a bit limited. Uh, Molar Fiends or Rush Rhinos are your best option, possibly a Defiler, but generally it's unreliable in a low amount of mortal wounds. If you've got loads of units surrounding you, fine, big game's cool, but generally I'm just going to say it's not going to work out quite as well. Sorcerer's Pact, I mentioned this, uh, you know, so I mentioned that summoning doesn't work, so it needs to be redone. Soul, f Soul Flare, cheap, but the cost is high and low chance to cause many, if any, mortal wounds at all. Vengeance for Prospero, let's face it, if you're in combat with Space Wolves, you're probably doomed. They do it better and they do have an equivalent, which they get, that's pretty much this and it works out for them. I get this, this is their sort of reverse side. Maybe that, you know, this should be targeted towards psychic abilities rather than combat or maybe shooting or something. Just basically not combat because we don't want to be in combat with Space Wolves. We want to be blowing them up with mind powers. Flesh change, I get this lore wise and actually because kind of like it, but it's just the cost of it's a little bit too much. Uh, you know, giving up a character maybe on his last legs, but and I think not sure if it costs reinforcement points, but I don't think it does. But uh, I don't like it. Uh, lore wise, yeah, fine. I I could sort of keep going because there's plenty of stuff here. You know, this is the promise thousands and stratums. There's plenty to choose from. 
But a lot of them are kind of lackluster. There's some that really help, but there's not enough generalist ones that all round situation stratagems. And I think that's what they're badly, badly missing. Side note on Psychic Awakening, all of them are actually pretty good. Uh, no denying that. I can see in the future codex for Thousand Suns, they're probably just going to wedge a few of these in. Uh, the problem with Psychic Awakening, a lot of stratagems were just going, ah, is that unit not working out so well? Throw them a stratagem, that'll make them good. And maybe they should just make that more of a permanent ability to make them good, but that might make them too good. Um, so yeah, there's a nice side of them in Psychic Awakening, but their core codex ones are actually a little bit lacking. Relics are an interesting one here, they are mediocre at best, which is a shame for Thousand Suns. You know, they only have six, and I feel they should have plenty more. They have a problem similar to Necrons, they have a maneuverability offer, uh, maneuverability offer on one of them and it far exceeds the others. It's good to get out of jail cards so it does quite well. There's also a bit too much focus on weapons with three of them but none usable on Demon Prince which is quite frankly a mistake. So I'm not going to list which ones change, they all do quite frankly except for the Dark, dark Matter. If you want a weapon, better be usable by Demon Prince next time, like better be usable by a Demon. Psychic abilities, let's face it, they kind of knocked out the power of Thousand Suns Psychic. Uh, what I mean by this is that there's plenty of options, 18 spells to choose from. I remember in 7th you could have stupid amounts of Psychic abilities, so okay. Uh, the interesting side of Thousand Suns is that they may slightly struggle to fit in enough units uh, to fill all this. Uh, what I mean by this compared to Tyranids, where so many big things are psychers. Thousand Suns, uh, your psychers are sort of HQ and infantry, and infantry are expensive. Uh, just something I thought was strange. You know, you've got all these 18 spells, but you may only have, you know, 8 of them, or 9 of them, or 10 of them, because you just don't have enough psychic ability. Still, another point is, uh, there's plenty of options here, and spaced out well in my mind. You have a section that's exclusively Thousand Suns. One's exclusive to Demons of Zinch, and uh, there's also the Mighty Dark Hereticus, which Death Guard must be fuming that they did not get that. Now, we have some clear winners. Weaver of Fates, Glamour of Zinch, stick these two on Magnus or Big Blood of Scarabs, and it's time to party. Uh, Death Hex, Pressings, Diabolic Strength, again Magnus or Doom Prince, and it's a delight. Warp Time, Gaze of Fate. The problem with these is clear winners, and sometimes it can be hard to justify others as buffs are almost always better than throwing out mortal wounds etc because there might not be so many mortal wounds almost in every game in 8th edition this list has served as well I would however like to mention a few that I think can be improved let me know what you think on this one so Zinj Firestorm I get a lower number of references here but there really needs to be a track of mortal wounds vers you know, versus warp charge cost uh, this one averages one maybe two mortal wounds Warp Chat 7 is not ideal, is it, you know, usually you're just going to get like one or so mortal wounds. Doom Ball is great, but Warp Charge 9 is far too much to ask for, bring it down to 7 I think. Temporal ma Manipulation, roll a 10 plus and get D6 wounds back and now we are talking, because D3 is just not enough. Uh, Boon of Change, as it's random, reduce the cost down to 6. Uh, Ball of Change, way too high for D3 mortal wounds and maybe a spawn that costs reinforcement points. Uh, maybe, you know, it should be Warp Charge 5 or 6, not 9. Treason of Zinch, I love this. It sounds awesome, but very difficult to pull off. Imagine this on Pask. Uh, pretty sure you get to target character vehicles. Could be wrong with that one. Maybe drop it down to Warp Charge 7, and we can think about it. Flickering Flames for demons, and you ain't including any demons, unless they're a Prince Vehicle or a Magnus. As such, it's probably Forge Fiends that will see the most use of this. If this has, you know... So basically this one only affects demons and not so many units are going to benefit from this one as much. I think it should affect warp flame weapons as well, along with vets and, you know, this would be amazing. Though saying that ninth will have probably stop that because then you only get plus one, minus one to wound now. You can't go way above it with like plus two. But still, plus one to wound is always nice. Add in warp flame and warp bolters and that would make this spell really really good to you know put on a Dean Prince make him buff up Rubik Marines or Scab Coat that would be a nice buff doesn't need to affect all weapons maybe just warp weapons because they're partly psychic demon stuff that, that works yeah so as you can see plenty of change but small changes can make these work and become far more appealing over the usual suspects so summary of these parts not actually you know not actually bad 
The Legion rule is meh. A little improvement would be good. However, Stratagem's Relics could do with a major update on there. Uh, but the three psychic abilities, they're all, you know, that's what we're all about. Thousand psych you know, Thousand Suns are psychers. So they do okay there. But again, also a little bit of rethinking there. However, the roster is where a lot of this does struggle because it just does not feel quite like Thousand Suns to me. However, I have a sort of idea to maybe make that a little bit better. So looking at the roster, I'm going to break this down the same way I did Death Guard, though I don't think it'll be quite as extreme. Well, maybe. This is, you know, how many units, then how many characters, how many demons, and then, you know, that should come from, you know, just demon detachments, and then how many vehicles. So unit amount, there's 26 options in the Death in the Thousand Suns Codex, which is not bad, but it's not great. That is quite limited. Of those, seven of them are character, which is far less than Death Guard, which is actually good. So I don't like filling up uh, codexes just with characters. It feels a lot of filler in a way. Demon units, there's three demer, demons, horror, screamers, flamers, which just hurts your detachment. Just take demon codex, you know, you're not going to include them in Thousand Suns. They hurt your detachment. Lastly, there's ten vehicles with Hellbrut and Mutilith to a degree. My point is, you know, to me actually, there is just not that many units that feel like Thousand Suns. Not including Demon Prince and Magnus, so you can include them if you want. You know, vehicles unmanned, you know basically rubric ones I want to see. Uh, only 10 of these feel like true rubric for me. Two of them are sorcerers where the exalted one vastly outdoes uh, the rubric. Uh, so you can almost say no and you know I'm including rhinos in that 10 which is yikes. I just want to see more rubrics on the field. You know the mainstay ones are obviously your rubric marines and your scarab occult but I would love to see a bit of variety there to just have more thousand suns. So, you know, I thought about this, whether I'd go down the route of, I did in Death Guard, I spoke about special characters, issues, etc. And I'm not really going to go down that route. It's pretty simple, you know. Uh, rubrics in the arena, like, you know, you've got choices in there. You know, you've got, like, your Zangors, which is quite nice, and your, root, and your Mutilith, which is a cool option, something different. There's just ain't enough rubric marines. That, that is it. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest some possible solutions to this that might help. Uh, the first one is a character one. I call it the Rubric Constructor, which is a support character. Should work a bit, work a bit like Reanimation Protocol. We can bring back uh, Rubric Marines or Scarab Cult. You know, thought, you know, I thought Scarab Cult, uh, they were all psychers. It turns out only there is the main sorcerer and then... Uh, there's, the other ones are actually in dust, so you can probably think about this reconstructor would bring them back. I know there's, you know, certainly when it came to reanimation protocol and summoning, there's a big scare about bringing units back, but I think maybe, a bit like Age of Sigmar from what I've played of it recently, uh, is that maybe it should be a bit more like that, that there is abilities to bring back stuff, and Rubric Constructor seems like a good option to me. Uh, Aether Manipulator, a unit with 18 inch order to help psychic abilities, uh, maybe allowing rerolls. Uh, but that may be a bit too much, maybe plus one to cast or deny. It's something that basically a character that is not a you know, can be a psycho themselves, maybe only one spell, but they're designed to like buff up psychic abilities around them. I think that would be really, really good. Uh, and then also like a pyramid of some type, let's face it, a fortification. Game Workshop seems to be pushing a lot of these fortifications. We're going to get a Thousand Suns pyramid or tower or something. I think that would be quite cool, so I'm quite excited to see something along those lines. Now, another one that may help, which Death Guard don't have, is that Thousand Suns can actually have a few Forge World help on this site. So you have in Forge World, and I'm going to butcher this pronunciation, the Kentai Occult Blades. These are basically uh, dual wielding similar blades to the Scarab Occult. Get them on the rubrics if possible, and cool, we now have a combat variant rubric marine. I think it would be quite cool just these rubrics standing with their sort of bladed weapons, and they're more designed to chop up. Maybe that goes a bit against lore wise, but they did have them, you know, in Forge World and in the 30k range. If you could just get those blades on there, I think that would be quite cool, and it would give you a combat variant from rubrics, which rubric marines really don't quite have. Next up is the Castellex Archaea Battle Automata. Now, for those who don't know, uh, if you've not read, like, if you don't know 30k lore, 
uh, I don't know very well myself, though I, one of the few books I've read is Thousand Sons. Thousand Sons did use quite a bit of Automata, and that's quite interesting. They had these, if you've not seen them in Forge Worlds, go check them out. And the next unit I'm going to see, they're basically these big bladed uh, Automata that they bring into battle. And I think, similar like Custodia's brought up a uni un lot of units, these should be brought in as well. They are very, very cool, and it's just something different. It may not be Rubric Marines as such, but it was something Thousand Suns used, and they were very, very cool. There's also, and this is the one that I would love to see, the Siren Pattern Contemptor, a stunning model. It's a Psychic Contemptor Dreadnought. You know, check them out if you're not seeing Forge World. Why these do not have rules in 40k is beyond me. I mean, if you gave them a data sheet for 40k and if they're partly affordable, Thousand Suns players, and if they're good, Thousand Suns players would probably buy these in the bucket loads because they just look so darn awesome. I do not know how these have failed to get a data sheet, uh, but they just look so good. I remember seeing them the first time, I was like, oh! Bring them in Thousand Suns for it, and they just haven't, and it just makes no sense to me. So, solid plan, make money, Games Workshop, get a day sheet for those bad boys, you do quite well. And no, no, I'm going to end it for Thousand Suns. As I said, I could have gone into the individual part of the roster, but ultimately, the weakness is there's just not enough Rubik Marines, where Death Guard got a bunch of Demon Engines, which were fine, I'm not a big fan of Demon Engines. I mean, like, Root Thousand Suns have Helldrakes. That does not feel Thousand Suns to me. And I think there's a lot of missed potential in the roster in that one. You could go down the Forge World route to offer some variety. Uh, there's some additional characters, which I suggest. But I just want to see more Rubik Marines. Give us some ranged ones, because goodness knows we need some anti-tank variety for Thousand Suns. So thanks again for watching. Please comment, share, like, and subscribe. What do you think of Thousand Suns? You know, the beginning of the sort of resurgence of chaos, but I feel as we've gone on a wee bit, they've been slightly left behind. So I'm very interested to hear what you think. Please check us out on social media. We can see upcoming projects. I've started back on uh, Astro Militarum because Admech was breaking my soul and I decided to try something out and I'm really actually delighted with some of the uh, vehicles that I've produced with them. So I'm very excited to try out some stuff there. And check us out on Patreon to help support the channel, bring you more content, because we absolutely love doing so. So thanks again, and we'll see you on our Tabletop Salt Battle Report.